All right, here's the beach. See these holes? And these are stones down there. I'm gonna try to dig them without breaking them. It's hard to do. There's one, except that's an empty shell. Well, that's no good. There's, that's a, another empty shell. The holes are real, so they gotta be down there. There's one right there, see that? Okay, can this one? See, there we go, look at that. Where's the thing that pokes out? Cool, huh? Is it a soft shell clam? Where's the thing that pokes out? Uh, it's there, it's just kind of retracted in. About 40 soft shells, cool some help from my little helpers. Just wanted to show you this view before we took off. It's beautiful down here by the river. Gorgeous day out. Got this nice pile of clams. Be a little bit to clean all those up, but hey, I don't care. I'll take it. All right, well, we made it back home. It was a lot of fun to get out there and do some clamming, and frankly, a nice way to take our minds off coronavirus for a little bit. Uh, maybe you're watching this video way in the future and you know how things turned out, but right now we still don't. So all I can say is hope you're safe and I hope you're healthy. And, you know, we'll see what happens, I guess. But a little bit about these softshell clams. Um, they're actually an invasive species out here on the West Coast, native to the East Coast of the U.S. And, you know, the, this would be actually a pretty good size one. I haven't ever dug ones much bigger than this. So that kind of begs the question, well... You know, when you have things out there like these huge gaper clams, why would you bother with something this size? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, these clams are really easy to dig. Um, they're, you know, plentiful. They, they, when you find one, you usually means you find several. And in addition, um, you know, they're not very deep. They're maybe about a foot down. The other thing about these is they live really quite high in the intertidal zone. You know, meaning that it doesn't have to be a really low, low tide to be able to access and, and dig some of these clams. With gaper clams, you need a very nice low tide if you're going to be successful. These, as long as it's a low tide, it doesn't have to be all that low. So, you know, I hope that makes sense. But, yeah, they're relatively easy to dig, especially like today when I had my family along. You know, and kids, it's just easier to get out there and, and kind of do that. So, um, I think eating-wise, they're every bit as good as a gaper clam. And when you clean them, you find it's pretty much the same procedure. So just like a gaper clam, they have a siphon. There's two muscles, these adductor muscles right about here and here. So cleaning the clam just involves, um, again, just like gaper clams, slipping that knife underneath the shell, as close to the shell as you can and cutting those muscles, and then kind of opening up that siphon. And so I can show you that just in a second here. Um, these, I find that I end up breaking the shells a lot when I'm digging them. Sometimes people get really concerned, you know, is that going to make the meat go bad or anything? In my experience, it's totally fine. Um, I probably wouldn't leave them in the fridge a long time if they have broken shells. I would just clean them right away, but I try to do that anyway, so not a big deal. Um, but definitely not a reason not to take the meat, you know, we don't want to waste it. So anyway, let's see if I can work around the camera and show you this. As a matter of fact, even on this one, you can see right here, the shell's a little bit broken. Uh, that might be from me, might just have been something that occurred naturally. but. Um, not going to hurt anything. You just want to make sure you don't cut yourself on those uh, little sharp edges of shell. Speaking of which, um, you can tell I'm pretty much healed from my last video incident. <laughs> it was this thumb. Uh, my nails grown all the way back out, pretty much normal. And eh, if you look really close, you can see a bit of a scar there, but not too bad. Um, anyway, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my other video. As a matter of fact, that'd probably be also helpful for um, learning how to clean these because I'm going to do this pretty quickly. So we will slip this knife in here and Bear with me as I'm working around the camera, but try to cut that adductor muscle back there. A little bit of water coming out of the clam. Do this side then. There we go. Just try to open them up. And work our knife along the edge. There we go. Okay. A lot of water in this clam. Unlike gaper clams, I've never seen any kind of pea crab living in these clams. Just not something that really happens. And what we want to do is try to push this open. Whoops. Yeah, so that's what you want to be careful of. Again, breaking it won't hurt anything. These shells, I mean, they call them soft shell for a reason, but there's a danger you're going to cut yourself doing that, so be extra careful. I got greedy. I was pulling a little too hard. Okay. There we go. 
and again. Again, not the most impressive, I know, but um, may not look appetizing, but once we get this done and you make yourself a nice chowder, it will be delicious, I promise. There we go, okay. And now I can kind of move this siphon, cut around that on either side. Ideally, I would have done this without breaking the shell like that, but that's okay, I'm not too embarrassed. Okay, remove the clam from the shell. Don't mind the fact I'm getting a little flood here. Just like a gaper clam, we can remove what's obviously meat from what's pretty obviously not by cutting right about here. There we go. And now we have a little bit of meat that goes along here. We'll remove this piece of shell and the siphon. And just like a gaper clam, a siphon is where the most of the meat is. Also, just like a gaper clam, there's two little holes there. So just want to kind of work your knife in there, pull it right through and open it up. And there we go. So this is really the bulk of the meat. Now, yeah, there's those little adductor muscles. You can eat those. There's a small, small foot to this clam. You can see it right there. I mean, we don't like to waste any meat, so we'll do our best to get that. But this is where the bulk of the meat is going to be. You have to remove the skin. And just like I talked about in my gaper clam video, if you try to do it now, it is a total pain. My advice is to throw this in a Ziploc bag just like this. Um, I'll, I'll clean all these and do the same thing. And then uh, freeze it for at least a few days. I usually leave it in for at least a couple of weeks. Once you thaw it, that outer skin right here will peel right off. Then you can chop it up, put it in your chowder, do whatever. So they're not that hard to clean. It's a pretty quick process. Just with soft shell, you typically have a whole bunch of them to do, which is why I better get going and, and finish this up. So anyway, thank you for watching and for joining me on this quick little clamming adventure. And yeah, like I said before, hey, stay healthy. Hope uh, everything is going well on your end. All right, see you later.